Good evening, everyone. My name is Janet Fishman, and I'm the president of Hope Organizers, Inc., a professional organizing company. And once a month, I have an interview series because everything in life involves organizing. And for example, you need to buy insurances. You know, you've got auto insurance, you've got homeowners insurance, you have uh, umbrella insurance, earthquake insurance. Maybe you need to have riders for jewelry. If you have a business, you may need workers comp. All of this requires you to be organized as you're researching the different companies that offer the insurance, how they handle and what it's gonna cost for your, your home. So all of this requires you to be very, very organized. And this evening we have an excellent speaker who is gonna elaborate on how it's so important to document your property for insurance purposes and other purposes. And so uh, as I introduce Richard, I wanna give you a little background about him. He was a master colorist in the TV post-production industry for over 30 years, where he specialized in restoring archival television shows and feature films. He has been a photographer since he was in high school, where he learned the finer points of photography in a dark room in the basement of his parents' home in St. Louis. Richard's current business is commercial photography and video property documentation for insurance and estate planning purposes. Yes, estate planning purposes. And also, you know, it could be used for divorce purposes. Richard firmly believes that pictures, good pictures, are the best way to promote your business. Richard started documenting property in 2014 in order to aid with loss recovery and insurance claims. Whether facing losses from fires, earthquakes, or burglary, the only way to achieve good settlements is with authentic documentation. Operating the uh, webinar tonight, the Zoom, is MJ Finstrom, who is the owner of Hot Dogs, a digital marketing company. And if MJ, if you could mute everyone besides Richard and myself, and then we'll reopen uh, up later on for questions. And if anyone does have questions, you can uh, put them in the chat and we will get those as we're going through and also at the end. All right, well, welcome Richard. We're so glad you're here tonight. Thank okay. you. Thank you, and, thank you. Um, people have been asking what the backdrop is. I think that's a good way to start to say what that disaster is that you took a photo of. That disaster is one of 43, yes, 43 homes that were lost in Bell Canyon uh, in the West San Fernando Valley in the uh, Woolsey fire in 2018, just like three years ago, last month, this month. And that leads us to the first question. Well, what does organizing for disasters mean? Uh, you know, in the simplest of terms, it means uh, being prepared for the unimaginable. Yeah. That pretty much covers it. Yeah. And that un unimaginable, we really don't want to imagine. But isn't this, Richard, why we have homeowners or renters insurance to pay for these kinds of losses? Well, yeah, it is. It is. But what uh, I will show you in my presentation is that, um, <clears throat> you know, insurance companies, shall we say, when they're behaving, will pay your claims. Uh, the thing is, they will not prove your claim. They don't know what was in that house behind me. Um, that's up to the person, to the policyholder. That's what they have to present um, to the to the underwriter, to the insurance company, uh, and that's that's the policyholder's burden. The insurance companies, if you play play by their rules, they will pay your claim, but they won't prove it. So, how does one indicate what one has in their home? Can I uh, can I screen share at this point? MJ, can he can screen share? Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Richard. Okay.
Okay. So um, let's see, Janet, where, where was your last uh, question? How today? does one indicate what one has in their house? Ah, okay. So, you know, the question is, why do we have insurance? And like you said, we have insurance ostensibly to cover us uh, for losses that may occur. Um, what's inside a home? Let's take a look. Um, this is what's left uh, after the Woolsey fire. Uh, it's hard to believe that, you know, the day before this fire, you know, a family was living there. Criminals, same thing. And what you'll find is that criminals and fire alike are equally indiscriminate. Uh, when, when you're in their sights, um, your stuff is theirs. It could be a fire or somebody who wants to take it. Um, I use video documentation to give a detailed look at what's inside of a property. Um, so what do you show? Well, this is a good example. If you look at this picture of this room, you know, a typical home has got, you just don't realize it, but it's got literally thousands of items, especially when you figure most people have been in their homes for often decades. Uh, you know, just that this little snippet of a shot here shows custom flooring, custom windows, masonry, uh, you know, rugs, furniture, uh, even the overhead lighting. Um, uh, all this stuff has to be uh, documented in order to recover it. And beyond that, you simply won't rec you won't remember it if you don't um, if you don't have it documented. You know, I was just thinking, Richard. Um, even for moving, we talked about uses of documentation. Yeah. When people move homes, I've been on job sites where people say, "Oh, this is missing. This is missing." The movers lost a box or two, so that could also help for a move as well. It does. Actually, another, since it's interesting, uh, you and I had previously met at OutWest Marketing, which is a real estate group. Um, it comes up in the real estate business all the time with rental properties. Um, I think it's my next slide. Yeah, if you look at this, this is like a rental property. You know, it's in pristine condition. And that's, this is where, if you have good video documentation of a property before a tenant occupies it, for example, um, it has, each party has a copy of it and it sort of eliminates a lot of the, the hassles of landlord tenant disputes uh, when people move out and it doesn't look this clean. Um, but back to what we were talking about, you know, a typical home has got millions of thousands of items anyway. And the question is, can you name them all? Because that's what you have to do when you have a major loss claim. Uh, the issue, it's like everything else. They always say the devil is in the details. Well, this is no different. And the more detail you show, the better your documentation is gonna be for, for getting a, a, a good claim, uh, a good settlement on a claim. Things like this mark on um, that piece of crystal I was uh, photographing, um, that's, that is classic authentication. Um, organization is critical um, and, you know, you know that, that's true for a couple of reasons. Um, one is um, that if you're going to go through a home, um, it helps you to, if you sort of think it out before you do it, uh, it helps you to avoid overlooking something. And more important, it makes it easier to find an item. If you ever have to really use your video to, to look for what you lost, um, it's gonna make it much easier if you go through it and can locate room by room what was, uh, it's, it's just another form of being organized to, to help with your uh, recovery. Let me ask you a question here, Richard. So if, if you come into a home to video and someone has like their jewelry here, in a drawer or their uh, silver put away in a china cabinet, should the client begin the organization process by sitting down and thinking, well, what do I have in my drawers that I need to pull out for Richard to video? Yeah, uh, that's often the case. Uh, believe it or not, it's actually more the case with high value clothing. 
strictly like with you know expensive leather coats and that type of thing um yeah i people ask me before i get there how do i prepare and i'll say for that type of stuff you know if it's got a lot of value take it out um and lay it out on a bed so we can see it uh, as opposed to me just doing sort of a quick sweep with a video camera in a closet um that's adequate for most most of our you know uh, clothing but for really expensive stuff particularly outerwear um that's what you, that's what you should do is lay it out sort of like this jewelry is laid out here um you know uh so when i video uh video document something this is more or less how it plays out and this again goes to just keeping it organized uh insurance adjusters insurance adjusters who are the ones who really settle claims they know that if you have one of these plates you probably had 12 of them and this type of stuff is usually in large sets uh i always tell people that a big part people ask me all the time well how does the adjuster or they'll say the insurance company how do these the insurance company know i'm not just making this up and I, my answer is they don't you have to sell your credibility to a, to an insurance company that's true but if the if the pieces of the puzzle look like they fit together if it doesn't look like like you're really um exaggerating a claim and you have good documentation you will get a full recovery and so do you then so that you're you're not making it up do you start off by video taping yourself walking into the home the address on the yes house? yes actually you'll see i did about a one minute synopsis i took a bunch of video and i put it together it comes up in a second uh you'll see how i do it one of the things i always start with uh believe it or not and this may sound ridiculous but i shoot the first thing i shoot is either a computer screen with today's news on it you know it could be yahoo.com or cnn doesn't matter what it is or or a, a newspaper because uh, my guess is before uh state farm hands you a check for $250,000 they're probably going to ask you when did you create this video and who created it so let's take a look let's see if i'm for some reason i'm hung up here let's see Hey, hang on a second, because PowerPoint is not cooperating. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. So I'll play through. This is about a minute long. And uh, like I said, I always start with a, uh, a newspaper to timestamp when I'm doing this. Clearly show it. I also, one of the, one of the beauties of video is you can talk while you're shooting video and it records. You know, I've had people stand next to me and they'll give me these these pretty detailed uh, descriptions of what I'm showing. Um, people underestimate what they own and what they have. Uh, you say, yeah, it's a that's a bunch of uh, you know pots and pans. Well, you know, go over to go over to Macy's and write a checkout for it. It's it's not fifty dollars. You know, cabinetry is is a big deal. Under cabinet lighting, granite countertops always show model numbers. Uh, every major appliance has barcodes on it like that. Uh, when you look at a room, uh, I always start with a big sweeping view of the room because invariably I'm going to, I'm going to miss something this way. You sort of cover it in a master shot. Look up what's in the ceiling, recess lighting, recess lighting is very expensive. If there's a skylight as this one is, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a motor on that. Um, if you show one thing, you're in effect showing and measure it. You're showing, uh, you know, the scale of the uh, scale of what's behind it. I often pick things up in my hand, uh, so again, so you can see how big something is. Also, so you can see the watermark. Um, it's something like this piano. Um, there's a million versions of Steinway pianos, but if you measure it and it's 68 inches long, that's considered a baby grand. And I think I even struck a key on this thing to get a sound out of it there you go it works it's a real piano uh things like jewelry you know if you just lay it out lay it out put a, a tape measure next to it you again uh get the idea of economies of scale same thing there that's why i put my hand in the picture is to be able to see how big it was 
Um, let me skip on here. Anyway, when you're done with the video, this is what you get. You get a thumbnail, or if, if you know film terminology, it's like a storyboard of what you shot. And each one of those, those small thumbnails represents a video clip behind it of several seconds. So it's fairly easy if you're well organized um, to look at the overall uh, video and see, you know, you can see it almost room by room. It's basically just a walking tour of a, of a home. Um, you know, the question is who would use this video? And interestingly enough, um, insurance companies actually live in the world of, uh, insurance companies live in the world of itemized lists. I've been told this many times. Um, the homeowner policyholder would take video like this and sit down with it and create a list like that. that that's that's the, the mindset of insurance companies. Uh, insurance, you know, I get, well, the insurance companies want itemized lists. Uh, you know, as I like to say, think of it like the IRS, itemized deductions. They want itemized lists of what you've got and what you're claiming. And it's not just the insurance companies. If an estate planning attorney needs to uh, close out an estate and needs to sell all these items. Um, yeah. They'd have a list or a divorce attorney that needed to divide the property among the parties. Having this would be very helpful. Yeah, when I've done estates, um, uh, to believe it or not, it's extremely time consuming to create a, to create a detailed list of everything mm -hmm. I've even in the little piece of video I showed you. But um, what they did in the, some of the estates I've done is they actually just put the video online and distribute it to people. And people can look at it and they can decide amongst family members around the country who wants what, or at least they can decide what was there. Uh, so yeah, uh, video, is, uh, video makes doing this pretty practical. And if it, if it, ha if one was closing in a state out, they could do an estate sale and have all the videos right there for an online. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sale. Yeah, usually what in reality, what I've seen happen is, um, you know, the heirs, you know, sort of usually want certain things to go to certain people and that, you know, they, uh, and yeah, beyond that, uh, the trustee can set up a, a sale with what's left. Mm -hmm. um, the question uh, came up, um, as to who assesses insurance claims, and this is important. Insurance adjusters assess claims, period. Um, who pays claims? Underwriters. So that's your state farms and your farmers and your Mercury and Geico and Travelers, USAA. They pay the claims. Uh, at the same time, the one person in the insurance picture who most policyholders deal with is their sales agent or their broker, and they do not. They are outside the claims process. Um, credit card statements. So, um, yeah, why wouldn't a credit a card statement be sufficient? Oh, sorry, enough, you know, what's, that? what's that? Why wouldn't a credit card statement be sufficient enough to support purchased possessions? Well, uh, the reason, the, uh, because if you look at this one, you can see credit card statements show, uh, you know, when and where you bought something but they don't show what you purchased. So they leave you sort of at a dead end. Right, so you could have a charge at Macy's and no one would know if that was dishes or linens <laughs> it's not, or it's not furniture. Itemized. Yeah, it could be anything. Right. Yeah, exactly. Richard, how does having a written, a written inventory with receipts or printed photos of items compare to video documentation? Um, you know, written inventories are good but written inventories um, are not nearly as good as when they're supported by video or even still pictures. Um, yeah, and as I was saying before, additionally, if you have video, uh, you have audio available for adding information while it's being recorded. And I, again, that happens with me all the time that whoever's home I'm in will be standing next to me and they're talking about whatever it is we're looking at, particularly if it's artwork or if they've traveled and they brought some, you know, something back that's of value from uh, from a trip or something. Um, let's see. Um, How much video, in terms of file size, do you create during video documentation? It looks like you've got a slide about that here. Yeah, I do. Um, so I shoot on a video 
you know, a, basically a high definition video camera, it shoots to one of these little cards. And when I say little, that's not much bigger than a postage stamp. Um, and uh, the data, you know, it's about a gigabyte per thousand square feet in a home, maybe a little more, but roughly that. And at the end of the day, you're gonna have, you know, three or four gigabytes of information that in this world, that's pretty storable. You can back it up. You can, uh, you know, uh, the question is, so what do you do with it? Um, this is what you do with it. You put it in a safe deposit box. But more importantly, because three or four gigabytes of video is not very big, um, you can copy it. And I advise people to copy it. Uh, most, most clients I work for, they always end up buying extra copies from me on flash drives. And uh, it's all the usual stuff. You know, you put it on your hard drive on your computer, make sure it backs up to the cloud because now you have it off site. Uh, put it on a flash drive, send it to a relative, uh, anyone you trust. Uh, some people send it to their, their insurance agents for storage. Uh, but the most important thing is that you have copies, preferably the original um, stored offsite. Well, what happens, Richard, uh, after you've made this, if there's additions to the home, such as a new room is added or remodeled, or you buy a special collection or additional jewelry from the first time that you made the video? Uh, what I tell people is if you've done an addition on your house, you have blueprints and you paid for them, get them. All blueprints are done digitally now. Uh, the big drafting tables and all that, that's the thing of yesteryear. All blueprints are video uh, or rather are, are uh, digital. And, um, you know, that should be basically you own them. If you have an addition on your house, you should be able to get a copy of those and put them right on the disc if you want the same disc with all your other information. And needless to say, as you acquire things over the years, you travel, uh, remodel, absolutely. Uh, you should uh, reshoot that portion of the video. Um, I know that most insurance companies, uh, particularly earthquake insurance companies, when they do their uh, you know, annual policy reviews, that's the first thing they ask you, what changes have you made to your, your house? So yeah, you add it on to the original. And then you could come in and you could come in and do a, an addendum basically. Oh yeah, I mean, you can physically, you just shoot back to the same card you did the original on, that's right. Um, but it's interesting, uh, you know, the blueprints remind me of the fact that if you had a house burned down like the one behind me, you know, having blueprints to that house would be a real good place to start. And um, when you do an addition on a home, the blueprints do not just cover the addition, they actually cover the entire home. That's just standard in the industry. So if you do, you know, if you add on a room to your house, the blueprints will show the entire house. So that's, that's pretty handy to have. It's a real good starting place. Um, what else do we have? I think that's, yeah, probably about it. I just remind people that the keys to good documentation are um, show details. You know, it's like anything else. The more detail you show, the more real it becomes, the better the credibility of, of the claim. And yeah, is it obvious what you're trying to show? Um, remember, remember every major appliance like this has got a tag like this and on it are two things, the model number and the serial number. So there's the model number, there is the serial number. And that is almost universally true. Uh, it could be anything from a, a refrigerator to an oven to a dishwasher uh, to a TV set, anything, you know, all have this information on them. And this is good when you buy, when someone buys a new appliance or a new computer or anything, immediately take these pictures before you install them or set them up. I know yeah. just with the, the cords and the power packs, I always tell my clients, as soon as you take something out of a box that has a power strip or power cord, get your label maker and label. Otherwise you're going to have a huge box or bag full of all of these cords 
and you don't know what appliance or item they go yeah. to. So similarly, like you get organized that way, just take your pictures and document at the same time. I know that um, like if you, when I did a lot of photography work, I had photography insurance on my camera equipment and I had to send in every time I bought, I had to make it an inventory of all the camera equipment. And then when I bought additional equipment, I had to add that on and send an, an updated inventory to the insurance company. So you can do that as you buy buy new appliances and new things. Yeah, um, you know what, the bottom line, I sort of always remind people, you know, yes, insurance covers your property, but it's the documentation that covers the insurance. Uh, insurance alone won't do it because uh, as I said, when we started, insurance companies will pay claims, but they won't prove them. Um, why don't we unmute and see if there's anyone that has questions? You can put them into the chat or you can ask them orally. Well, this is really great. I learned a lot. Darren has a question. Yeah, I have a question. So how often should this be updated? Because I'm thinking that at some point an insurance company is going to treat a list as being stale if it's too old. I mean, is there a rule of thumb for that? I guess every five years, you know, I, as I said, I, whenever I do a documentation, I always start with a timestamp on it, something to authenticate when it was being shot. Usually I'll grab a newspaper, literally when I'm driving to someone's house, I'll, I'll pick up a newspaper on the way over um, for as long as new, newspapers are still being published. If not, you can use a computer screen. But yeah, I think it's a good point, probably five years. Thank you. Um, Melinda, you're on mute, but she has a question. You want to come off mute, Melinda? You're still on. Oh, there you go. Okay. I have, thank you. Um, the question I have is that the, the line that you keep saying is, but the insurance won't prove it. Do you mean prove it in court? Just restate that, please. No, what I meant was they will not prove what your losses were. You know, insurance company knows that they write a policy that cover your house to rebuild it, which is calculated at a certain number of dollars per square foot. And they know that you have, usually they, usually your homeowner's insurance policy will cover about, um, about half in value of what the house was worth. So if you have an insurance policy that covers your rebuild cost on a home at $300,000, then they're going to sort of assume you have home contents worth 150,000. And, you know, that, that of course, is, depends on what insurance you buy. You can vary those numbers, but they don't just hand you a check because you lost your house, uh, at least not, not for the contents. They will rebuild your house, but as far as what was in it, they have no idea what was in it. And they're not usually going to pay off unless uh, they'll give you what's known as a depreciated settlement. Um, unless you can substantiate your claim. Does, does that answer your question? Uh, yes, I had bathrooms redone and, and I had to prove that the tiles were, you know, very um, Spanish style, very um, expensive, basically. Yeah, you know? That's right, that's right. Right, they're just gonna give you sort of an average, an yeah. average, and if it's anything more, you have to prove it. Okay, yeah, that is the quality that it is. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Anyone else have a question? Yeah, we got one here in um, the chat. You kind of touched on this with taking a video of the address and walking inside to show the, can't see the whole thing. Um, walking inside to show the actual house, but couldn't someone edit a video or fake the filming of the inside to a more luxurious house or even borrow or put items in the house that aren't theirs. How, how do returns work on, how do returns, oh, like if you bought, you bought a bunch of stuff, brought it into the house and then returned it to the store. Um, the question is, could, could, could you fraudulently stage a claim? Yeah, the answer is absolutely you could. And that goes back to what I said earlier: is when you're when you're 
in the claims process, you sort of have to establish credibility with the adjuster. If, if the adjuster thinks that your story smells fishy, they'll start dragging their feet. It's that simple. Insurance companies do that all the time. They don't make money paying claims. They make money collecting premiums. And uh, if they don't think that your, your claim sort of adds up uh, because you're claiming you live, uh, you know, in a, in a $3 million home, but, you know, you work at uh, Best Buy for $15 an hour, they may be a little suspicious about what you're claiming. So they try and put the, they will typically put the whole picture together. If you talk to attorneys who settle claims, this is pretty much what they'll tell you. And this is where keeping the, the paper receipt, the actual receipt, and you can keep it in paper, you could scan it in, can support the video. As Richard said, if you just have a charge on Macy's on your credit card, that doesn't say what item you purchased. I tell clients all the time, you have to save your original receipts. Um, that would help too, because then they could look at the original receipt. They could go to the credit card statement and see that the charge is there as well as on the receipt. receipt. And they would be able to look at that credit card statement because if you did return the item, they're gonna see a credit on the, on the next month's statement. So uh, this is why keeping the, those receipts would be good good to supplement the video question. Yeah. Uh, Melinda has another question. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. The question is, um, I don't, I know I don't, I'm just reorganizing, just retired as Janet knows a year and a half ago. I don't have a proper box to carry things in like for emergencies running out. And so anyway, back to the fire, what type of box or container should I have for my you should get a, what's called a rated safe. Uh, the, these are safes that are rated up to certain temp to hold to hold their integrity and protect contents for up to a certain number of hours at a certain temperature. Okay, and rated. no surprise, the ones that that you know can survive hotter and last longer are a lot more expensive. Okay, and that's the same thing with filing cabinets. You can buy fireproof filing cabinets. Uh, they're very expensive, but they do exist. Okay, thank and, you. You know, back to what you'd said earlier, Janet, you can do all that, or if you keep reasonably good records and on the really, you know, expensive items, take pictures or um, scan the receipts, you're sort of covered. You don't need to buy a house full of, you know, fireproof filing cabinets uh, for, for a fire that you hope will never come. Yeah, that's good about scanning. Thank you. Any other questions? These are very good questions. Mm. Any other questions? Mm. Well, uh, next month in December, uh, in honor of the holidays and in honor of it being kind of a, a rough year or year and a half for many people, instead of having a speaker, I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm going to be offering to people who have uh, lost their jobs or are going in a new direction with their career, uh, a hope and inspiration one hour Zoom. Um, I want to give back to the community and to um, inspire people who may be struggling and kind of lost after all that's happened in the last year and a half. So if you have any uh, friends or colleagues that are in that position, when the flyers come out uh, tomorrow, <laughs> um, you can forward that to them. Uh, Richard, do you have a, a slide there or you wanna put in the chat your contact information, your email, your phone number? Oh yeah, I will, yeah. And uh, we'll give Richard a moment to, to do that. And, um, oh, we have, Melinda has a question. Go ahead, Melinda. So I do understand uh, Richard, that you do go to homes with, I mean, you, I know Jan's a photographer, you obviously are, but this is pretty much your specialty. So you make appointments with people. And um, I guess other than having a neat and clean house, you tell them certain things of how to prep for your visit. That's pretty much it. And I have found usually the one thing that people need to prep, believe it or not, is, is high value clothing. 
because clothing is usually put away in closets or it's, it's in, you know, uh, protective covers or boxes on shelving, particularly shoes. Shoes are often in boxes. Uh, it's really valuable. I say, you know, before I get there, go ahead and put it out. Uh, a bed makes a perfect, perfect display table for putting out, you know, uh, spreads of, uh, you know, expensive jackets, outerwear, that type of thing. I hear you. I just got a brand new Prada print. My daughter got it she worked for Mrs. Prada. So <laughs> that's worth something. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and, and as Richard said, and, and as Melinda asked, this is sort of, yeah, the pre, pre-organization that you need to do. Um, I know when I go into homes as a professional organizer, people ask me, is there anything that um, you know, I need, need to get ready? And it's like, yes, you need to have garbage bags. You need to have different colors so we can distinguish between the donations and the trash. Um, you need stapler, you need file folders. So yes, it's always good to ask uh, people that are coming in to, to help you what kind of items that or steps that you need to take to, to prep for that visit. So Richard mm -hmm. has put his information in the chat. If you can take a look at that, his phone number is 818-421-9154. And his email is r-c-a-s-s-e-l photo at gmail.com. So Richard, I want to thank you very much for being with us tonight. Oh, happy to do it. And I want to, uh, hopefully, we want to keep you in business, but we don't want to have any, any natural disasters. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You want to buy the insurance, but you don't want to use it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Good. Thank, well, thank you, you so much for being here tonight. And if anyone wants to hear this again or pass it on to their, their friends, um, it will be up on my website and, and on YouTube in uh, the next few days. Thank you, MJ, for